What's up, happy people, and welcome back to Tip Lady Catch and Release. So today is Sunday, and that means it is the verse of the week. And I got three verses today, and I'm just going to be right up front with it and bring them all to you. But I'm also going to give you three more, because, I mean, God's Word is anointed. It's all anointed, and all of its verses are powerful. So today we're going to start in Romans 116. The verse will be on the screen here for y'all. But I encourage you, go, go grab your phone, go grab your Bible, and get this word so that you can read it. God will guide you through this word, I believe he will today. And by the end of the video, if you can do anything else, I pray that this word will get so far down deep into your soul that it will sink down deep into your spirit so, so that you'll actually know it and so that you can live it out today. I believe that that is going to happen today. So let's read from Romans 1.16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. Everybody say, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Come on, somebody. The title of today's video is called claimed unashamed because I truly do believe that God has claimed us to live a life that is unashamed of the gospel so I'd like to start off today's video by talking about that word the word unashamed and I'll give you the definition here in a little bit but I need you to understand that the opposite of unashamed is ashamed wait I mean I mean you should you should know that unashamed ashamed right same word just a un underneath it, or before it. So, I'm going to read here in Luke 9.26. So why then are you ashamed of being my disciples? Jesus talking. Are you ashamed of the revelation truth I give you? I, the Son of Man, will one day return in my radiant brightness with the holy angels and in all splendor and majesty of my Father. On that day, I will be ashamed of everyone who's been ashamed of me. I don't know if he picked up on it or not, but that word, ashamed, was mentioned four times in that one verse. Four times! Now that is a lot of times to be mentioned in one verse. So after reading that, I was like, okay God, okay, you're, you're telling us not to be ashamed. I, I understand that. You're telling us not to be ashamed of your power, not to be ashamed of your revelation truth. You're telling us not to be ashamed of when you come back, but to, but, to, but to stay intentional for when you come back, for that return is at hand. And if that verse makes it so clear, if you are ashamed of him, he'll tell the Father that he didn't know you, that he's ashamed of you. Two weeks ago, I gave you the word of the year, intentional, and with that I talked about his return being at hand. And he's really been speaking to me things through that, speaking to me things through the book of Revelation. But, there's always, there's always a but, but, we're not ready for him. So you need to stay intentional. In part two, today's video, you need to be unashamed of the gospel of Christ. Come on, somebody. Just, just got through and come on, somebody, because it's good. I love the word that God's given me, that he's put in my spirit. But, like what I had to ask God and what I'm sure you're asking me right now if you could. But how, Z? Like, like, how do we live unashamed? And I'm glad you asked. And we will get there. I'm, I'm just going to read this from my notes to make sure I'm saying this right. Because as I was looking at the definition of unashamed, according to Google, y'all know, I like to go to Google to figure stuff out. According to Google, unashamed means to not be restrained by the embarrassment or the consciousness of moral guilt. And then if we looked at what ashamed means, so, so what I just read you was unashamed. Now let's look at what ashamed means. Ashamed means, I mean, just opposite. It means to be unwilling or restrained because of fear of shame, ridicule, or disapproval. Now, that makes sense. That is what the world labels shamed and unashamed. So I hope that you can understand that. But now, let's take that and apply that to what Jesus said. Because when he's saying, 
Yeah, yeah, don't be ashamed of the gospel. He's saying, don't be unwilling to share your faith. Don't be fearful that the gospel might bring shame upon you. And don't get me wrong here. I'm not saying it won't. Like, like, it is very possible that the gospel might bring shame upon you. And I will not lie to y'all standing right here. Or, I mean, I'm actually sitting right here. Whatever. I will not lie to y'all up here. I mean, even Jesus said in Matthew 10, 22 that all nations will hate you because you are my followers. But everyone, everybody say everyone, everyone who endures to the end will be saved. Just make it to the end. Just endure. Don't have to look pretty. Don't have to sound good, look good, taste good. I don't know. But just make it to the end. Endure. Endure to the end. And the only way that you can endure to the end is by staying intentional. Staying focused. I mean, I hope this camera is focused on me right now. And that is the kind of focus that we have to have on God this year. Because if we're that focused on Him, then the Bible says that Jesus will claim us as his own. You see that word claim? Yeah, yeah, that word claim is in the title. Not only because it rhymes, which it does, but also because 2 Timothy 3, 2 through 5 says, and this is an amplified version, so it has, it has all the big words in there. So, so here's what it says. It says, for my people will be lovers of self-narcissism, self focused, lovers of money, impelled by greed, boastful, arrogant, relivers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, profane, and they will be in it. And it just keeps going on like that for a couple verses. It is dropping the hammer. But then if you go back and look at verse 5, that was verse 2, and a little bit of verse 3, if you go and look at verse 5, what it says really caught my eye says, holding to a form of outward godliness, which is religion, although they have denied its power, for their conduct nullifies their claim of faith. Avoid such people and keep far, far away from them. He's saying that on the outside, the outward you, your claim of faith on Sunday morning, you're out there and you're claiming faith, you're claiming Jesus, you're claiming the gospel, which isn't a bad thing. But when you wake up on Monday morning, your conduct, your actions nullify, nullify, what's, what's that? What in the world does that mean? Nullify, 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 means to cancel out. So it cancels out your claim of faith. Come on, somebody. Your walk cancels out your talk. You, you, my friend, are ashamed of the gospel. So today God has sent me to tell you to wake up and be unashamed of the gospel of Christ. Got one more verse for you, I promise, just one. Revelation 3, 2 through 3 says, Wake up, strengthen what little remains, for even what is left is almost dead. I find that your actions do not meet the requirements of my God. Go back to what you heard and believed at first. Hold on to it firmly. Repent and turn to me again. If you don't wake up, I will come suddenly as an unexpected thief. And anybody can repent. Romans 1, that verse we read earlier, said it's like for the Jews. You know, the Jews are, the Jews nowadays would be like the saved people. And the, but, it, but it also says for the Gentiles. Now the Gentiles, in today's time would probably be like the unsaved people, the unclean people, the unholy people, the people that don't live the way that God calls them to live. It's like the person that you don't think that deserves the gospel. The person that you don't think that deserves his love. The person that you don't think should deserve your love or your attention. But what if today Jesus is telling you that you need to live unashamed around that person and it will take an intentional effort to live unashamed around that person? What if you claim your faith around that person and by you claiming your faith around that person that will bring them to be saved? Just what if? What if? What if? What if by you claiming your faith that person turns to God because God does not care who they are or what they've done but he said repent 
and turn to me. Again, come on someone. Jesus is claiming me. He is claiming me today. But he's claiming you too. But he's not just claiming me and he's not just claiming you to just be ashamed of what he's done. Just to live in the fear of, of people that... Can I be real? He has not called you to live ashamed because you're scared of what somebody might think when really they, they just want to see you to push through the pain and to live in the triumph. Because if you do that, then they're going to be like, wow, man, his or her God must be the real deal. I'm telling you, I'm telling you this morning that if you are, if you are ashamed, and this is harsh, I know that this video has probably been a little harsh today. God started speaking it to me and I'm like, whoa, God, like, like, you sure that's what me to tell them? You sure it's not just for me? You sure you want you want me to tell them that? Like, God, I'm not sure what they'll think. It just just the picture, the tone that I can picture in his voice was like, yes, that's why I told you to tell them, Zayden. Because if you don't tell them, how would they know? How would they know that God has claimed them? How would they know to be unashamed of the gospel? How would they know to endure to the end? Even when everybody and everything else around them just keeps telling them to give up, to quit, to stop. But you don't want to, because God has a better plan, a better purpose for you, a purpose to endure to the end, because his return is at hand's reach. How would, how would they know? How would you maybe right there watching know that you become self-focused, lovers of money, impelled by the ways of the world? What else does it say? Um, greedy, boastful, arrogant, disobedient to your parents, ungrateful, unholy, and profane. How would you know? How would they know that your actions don't line up with your claim of faith? How would you know that all you have to do is just repent and turn to Him and He'll come to you and He'll change you and He'll pick you up and He'll turn you around and He'll place your feet on the solid ground. How do you know? And He gave me the answer to that. He said, because Zayden, you're going to tell them. That's it. It's that simple. That's my job. That's my mission today. That's what God has anointed on me to do this very day is to bring this word to you wherever you're watching, wherever you're at, wherever in the world you are. Jesus is just saying today to be unashamed of the gospel. And if you don't, the Bible says that you will be thrown into the lake of fire that burns with suffer. And he will not welcome those into the kingdom. This message today is a warning. It's a warning to turn from your sin. It's a warning to repent. It's a warning to, to live unashamed. To live the way that, that God has called you to live. To live with a claim of faith. Because there's so many of you who are watching today. Maybe ones that I know and maybe ones that I don't. That you're claiming faith. You know, you're like, yeah, I go to church on Sunday. Yeah, I'm a Christian. But, but your actions don't line up with that. So I'm just coming to warn you today. If you're watching, you know people like this, send it to them. Share it. Whatever you gotta do, we need to get this word out. Because this word is the anointing of God. And God has burdened me with two groups of people that this message is for. And before we go, I, I would like to pray over you and ask for the Holy Spirit to help you. Because you can't do it on your own. That verse in... Romans 1 says, by the power of God is the only way to salvation. It's the only way to salvation. So the first group of people I would like to pray over is the group that's saying, yeah, I, I don't know Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I am ashamed. I don't know him. I'm ashamed that I don't know him. I want him to claim me as his own. So that's the first group. The second group is the group that's saying, yeah, I do know him. Yeah, one time I had a relationship with him, but yeah, you know, just around that certain group of people, just around those friends, you know, I, you know, every time I walk around them, it's just, you know, I get all shy and I don't want to talk about God. You know, God is saying right now, be unashamed of me. So what are we going to do? What we're going to do, the only thing I know how to do, we're going to do what God told me to do. 
we're going to pray, and we're going to pray for the power of the Holy Spirit to come upon me, and to come upon each and every one of you watching, because we're not going to do this without God, but with God we can do all things with Christ who gives me strength. That verse, I just want to read it one more time, one more time before we pray. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone. And then I'll just say the sinner and the Christian, it's for everyone. So I'm going to pray, and if you either want to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, or if you want to live this unashamed life, please repeat after me. Dear God, I come to you today, and I acknowledge that you are my Lord and Savior. God, help me to have that faith I had at first. Or God, if this is my first time, God, I want to have a faith in you. Father, I pray right now that the power of the Holy Spirit comes upon me and that you help me. Help me to live unashamed because I know that you've claimed me to be unashamed. I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. You died and you rose again. And now that same power that rose you from the dead is living in me. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Y'all, that's all it is. Come on, somebody. I clap for you. I celebrate you. Because now you've made a decision to live unashamed of the gospel. You've made a decision to live for Christ. Jesus, Jesus has claimed you today. And now all eternity, which that time is at hand, his return is at hand. Now all of eternity you can live for him. We're staying intentional. And we're living unashamed. Those are the things that he is calling us to do today. That he has positioned us by his power, by his authority to do today. He's going to do great things. Miracle signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. Because we are living bold. We are living unashamed. Because we know without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus has claimed us as his own. So I thank you for watching Tip Lady Catch and Release. Make sure go down, like the video, share this word to people that need to get this message down in their soul. Have a great day, take care, God bless, and we are gone. Drop, I'm a